Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, this episode of MGR Unplugged. Um, we're just about uh, on the eve or weekend of the Super Bowl, which is going to be one of the major topics for today's uh, podcast. I know David is very excited, even though he hasn't watched a single uh, football game this season, I think. No, I watched the playoff games. You did? Not the playoffs, big, yeah. Okay, yeah. Not a big right. regular season. Football okay, that's guy. fine. So, but we, uh, we have a few topics before we're going to start actually last week or the last couple of weeks. I think we discussed a little bit of the media companies including Barstool and uh, The Ringer, um, possible acquisitions and so forth. And one of them just happened. The other one is kind of in the works. Yeah, so Barstool week, is first. Last week, it was a rumor that Barstool was going to get acquired by uh, Penn National Gaming, which is uh, a casino operator. Casino operator. They own like uh, racetracks, uh, uh, horse racetracks, okay. and uh, basically anything gambling related they are into i think they're it's funny their stock went up so one funny thing so they acquired barstool for 450 million dollars um the the structure of the deal is basically i believe they're putting 100 million cash up front um and then in another year they buy more to own 50 percent of the company and then they have the option to buy the whole thing something like that but uh it seems to be an all-cash deal um, and they're owning a majority of stake with options to own the whole thing. Um, but the funny thing is basically they put in a hundred million to Barstool and today their stock went up over 600 million in, do you, uh, I'm kind of curious, do you, do you happen to know how much was uh, Barstool or the valuation when they, uh, they bought it for, for 50, but what was the revenues or it like four time revenues? Yeah, their or? revenues last year, it's estimated about a hundred million revenue. All right, so you bought like a four, four and a half point, four and a half time revenues. Yeah. And they were profitable <clears> last <throat> year, apparently, for the first time. Okay. Um, so they, do not, they do have, I mean, I actually, I, had to go, I didn't know much about Barstool's variety of content on podcasts, but they are huge. They, are, they yes. have a lot of so stuff going on. One interesting thing is I was looking at some of the podcasting <clears> rankings, <throat> and we actually talked about this a little bit last week, but as far as sports podcasting, Barstool is number one right. um, above ESPN. Yeah, well, and so is Bill Simmons' ringer, which we will discuss in a few minutes. If I were to make a, I'm actually considering buying some stock. This oh, is not no. financial advice <laughs> in pen, because let's put it very plainly. Barstool, which has more reach on podcasting and to younger audiences under 30 than ESPN does right now. Right. And ESPN's valuation is roughly $50 billion. Well, I mean. So that's 100x Barstool. So are you talking Barstool overall, adding up all the podcasts on ESPN, adding up all the podcasts? Yes. Or you're talking individual shows? No, all the podcasts. Uh -huh. Not only are the top shows of Barstool way bigger than any top shows of ESPN, but overall, I believe Barstool has 8 million plus unique a month listeners, and ESPN has about 6 point something. Are they also uh, YouTube uh, programming? I oh, mean, yes. podcast yeah, for yeah, Barstool? Yeah. They're, they're multimedia. Right. You know, they started as a blog actually year years ago. Right. Um and then they started getting into podcasting, video, everything. Okay, so they, and, I'm assuming they have obviously video downloads and all the stuff and they have their own video programming. Yeah, and now that they have this multi billion dollar gambling giant behind them and the funding, obviously they just got a hundred million in cash. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that they're gonna do even more and more and more. And the whole company pen is worth about I think as of this morning with the valuation increase, about three and a half billion valuation. Uh, and like I said, ESPN alone is worth 50. Now, obviously ESPN has a ton of properties. So don't get me wrong. Right. But, uh, if I could see Barstool's valuation being 450 now going another 10 X being worth 5 billion, say five, everything on now. Barstool is free. Uh, no, no subscription based. That's not true. They, most of it is, but they actually have Barstool Gold, or I think is what it's called. Um, and it's a, they started it last year. It's a premium subscription to certain okay. content so there's, there's a revolving selection. around gambling. Um, oh, okay. I see. I think I think Barstool is a rocket ship. Actually, the founder, Dave Portner, made a video yesterday. Yeah, yeah. He literally called it a rocket ship. And uh, I, I just think that this company will be up there with the ESPNs and Fox Sports of mm -hmm. the world down the road. That's what I asked you about the YouTube, because obviously Barstool does not have television presence per se in the traditional broadcast media on either over the air or on the air. They have basically YouTube, which is obviously streaming video, but um, the advantage that ESPN has is they always the additional revenues from advertisers on television, basically, which Barstool will have just uh, podcasting or 
uh, YouTube advertising and all that. So if I were to guess what Barstool's next moves are, um, now that they work with an actual gambling company who has all the licenses, all the infrastructure needed. I think that they'll be making their own gambling and betting products. Sure. You yeah. could bet online with Barstool. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they made their own Barstool subscription service that's like beyond what they're doing now, which is like its own mini Netflix, but for sports. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I predict that they would do. Which, one is, which one is the... Um uh, most famous or popular podcast or program for uh, Barstool. I think we discussed this. They have um, one that's called um, Pardon My Take. Mm. That's the biggest, I believe. Uh, they have a, a girl's one that is Call Her Daddy, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah We yeah, joked that about that name. Um, but yeah. they have a lot of big shows. Okay. Um, but I think they're going to grow a lot. And then the other company, The Ringer. The which Ringer, was, right. That one I'm more familiar with. I, I listen to a few of the podcasts now on a regular basis. That one was founded by Bill Simmons. Um, so there were rumors that... So Bill Simmons has a partnership with HBO, which is owned by Time Warner. And uh, there were rumors that they were in talks to sell the number that was thrown out by Bill Simmons that he was asking reportedly. This is the Wall Street Journal. Um, was $100 million. And basically, the Ringer reportedly did about twenty million in revenue last year. Um, they they're growing. I think that they could pr probably hit twenty five, thirty million this year. Um, but he wanted a hundred million, which is steep, obviously, for twenty million revenue. That's not profit. That's revenue. The Ringer does have also, uh, I don't know, thirty different programs or yeah, they have about two hundred employees, I think. Um, Probably I don't know fifty plus podcasts. And they uh, they don't do just sports for the record. They do all yeah, kinds of sports variety and pop shows. Culture. Yeah, they do um, entertainment. They do sports. They do basically variety shows and kinds of things. Yeah, and I think uh, uh and, oh yeah okay so then they were in talks with Time Warner. The price was too high. Basically, it looked like that Time Warner was looking to pay maybe sixty to eighty, but not willing to pay a hundred. Um, and then Spotify jumped in, who obviously, if those who remember, acquired Gimlet, which is another podcasting network, for 200-something million um, a year ago. And now they look it looks like they're in talks with the ringer to buy them, too, and they maybe will pay that $100 million price because Spotify has the money right. and wants to start acquiring all these uh, shows. So uh, it'll be interesting, but it's funny that in the last two weeks, basically two – major kind of independent podcast networks that have popped up uh, are both looking to sell in the hundred millions range uh, hmm. as far as their valuation. Um, and I think it's only going to go up from there. Uh, we were discussing off off the show that uh, Joe Rogan is probably the first podcasting billionaire. Right. Um, but it just shows that the, the... I mean, to become billionaire, not yet. Will become. Yeah. <laughs> the numbers on him are pretty... It's hard to guess exactly, but for, if you, Jerogan's a pretty humble guy in his show. He doesn't act like it. But he if you definitely just, doesn't act like uh, the money he's making. If, if you run the numbers just based on his viewership, the guy is probably making by himself over fifty million dollars a year. Well, but keep in mind, it's not just the podcast. He's also doing the uh, UFC. Uh, no, no, no. I'm talking just the show. Oh, you're talking just talking revenues from the show? comedy and UFC. Yeah, because he's also a stand-up comedian. No, he I'm does the UFC uh, shows. Just through the podcast, the guy probably <clears throat> makes 50-plus million And that's year. based on downloads and yeah. uh, impressions or CPM for You can do podcast. the math. If, the guy, if, if Joe Rogan has an average <clears throat> of, let's say, two uh, advertisers per show, and I would guess he charges a premium uh, he CPM. He doesn't have two advertisers per show. Well, I'm going to say two. He has like at least six. Well, at the beginning of the show, he spends like seven minutes introducing all his advertisers. I know, but doesn't he talk about them for a few minutes each? No, it's about sixty seconds and ninety seconds, something like that. I mean, he, I mean, he has like. Well, if you if you say he makes, let's say, a hundred <clears throat> CPM from his advertisers an episode, and he gets it's estimated anywhere from five to ten million listeners per episode. Uh, and you can he does I don't know how many episodes a year, a hundred probably. Mm -hmm. You can do the math. The guy yeah. makes a lot of money. Um, and because I was putting in perspective um, that like Stephen Colbert, I believe, makes about 20 million a year on his late night show. And so if Stephen Colbert, who, by the way, has about half the viewership of Joe Rogan, um, makes 20 million and that's including he has a huge studio, a whole staff of writers, right. producers, everything and CBS taking their cut and he makes 20 million. 
how much do you think Joe Rogan is making with no staff, no studio, no nothing, no cut to a major network? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they, they, that's the thing. He's completely independent as a big studio, actually, but right. on a little stuff, you know, with his... And he doesn't even monetize... Producers like and all that that's stuff. That's the thing. He, could, <clears throat> he doesn't have his own, basically... Um, Merchandise and all that stuff. He has merchandise, but not anything that is like serious. Like he's not I mean, he like wants bar to keep stool. It, he, yeah, he. I mean, I don't blame the guy. The guy. He wants to keep it all casual conversation. That's his. That's if his the thing. dude's making a million a week, talking right, but, about but whatever his he philosophy wants. is that he he just wants to have a conversation. He doesn't need to prepare all no, this research per podcast. I understand. He just I'm wants saying. To, I'm saying as far as the business side. Right. Right. Yeah. I get it. Okay. He's making a million a week without needing to worry about running a business. Good and for without him. Without censorship. Without war about what to say not to say whatever he guess his guess is have a conversation right, but, for two hours well let me finish that uh he could be making a lot more forget if joe rogan the reason why barstool is valued so much is because they are a business and they're treating it as right, if imagine right. they don't have the reach of joe rogan but they could down the road imagine if you took joe rogan's audience but then built a whole business around it and it wasn't mm -hmm. just making money from ads but making money from selling your own products your own subscriptions all of those things that's why Barstool just sold for four hundred fifty million, and, and I think they could be worth five billion. And that's what another company that we will talk about later today did. Um, but that's just a teaser. Anyways, uh, I said that it's uh, Super Bowl weekend, so I did want to um, go through some facts and fiction about the Super Bowl. Um, a lot of data, and I, th I think um, some people may know this, but it's just it, it's just amazing to me how much advertisers throw everything out the window just to be part of the Super Bowl as part of, you know, being advertisers in the big game that they call. Uh, to the point that obviously it doesn't make financial sense as far as recovering or ROI. Like so much we worry ourselves about our ROI. Or, well, I, 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 right? It's a branding effort, I understand it. And obviously you're not going to have 100 million people average watching a game or a commercial anywhere else or any other time. It's also but like still, you get put in this exclusive club of, right. oh, I have a Super Bowl commercial. Right, exactly. So so they don't do it, like I said, they don't do it for ROI saying, okay, well, I mean, I'm not going to sell a bunch of free lays or potato chips or whatever to make up the 5.5 million advertising yeah. spent. But keep in mind, the companies that advertise have $100 million plus budgets. Of course. That's they got to put it somewhere. Right, right. So, But for the most part... Uh, even the gold daddies and all that stuff when they did it back in the days i mean they domain names are 899 i mean you need to yeah but monetize a lot guess what who's the most famous in the domain Registrar. space right right gold daddy is number one nobody is there's plenty of others but they're number one for a reason because of their marketing so just to give you some numbers last year we don't have the numbers obviously for this year yet we'll probably have them sometime next week uh by the way all the advertising spend for this year's Super Bowl was sold out already back in November. The Super Bowl is on Fox this year. Um, it was CBS last year, so this year is Fox. They already announced back in November, mid-November last year, that they were sold out to the point that they expanded even more advertising space, what they call pre- and post-Super Bowl, to, to basically allow some advertisers to get part of the, uh, of the game, even though it's not exactly doing the game. But anyways, last year... The total revenue for advertising through the Super Bowl game, not pre and post, was three hundred and thirty-six million dollars. So that's quite a bit. I mean, to give you an idea, the the increase. Um, how much? How much does Fox pay for the rights? I don't know. I don't know how much they pay. I think it's a multi-year contract too. Right. I know. I know. Uh, so I don't know exactly how they break it down. Um, and obviously they take a gamble too because they don't know which teams are going to be big markets, small markets. But you can you can almost guarantee that you're going to have a certain audience. Uh, yeah, for I the mean, Super Bowl. I don't know how much the market it matters, but I don't think it's as big of a deal in other sports. I think people watch the Super Bowl regardless. They do, they do. Even though um, the ratings have been going down, and I want to get to that those numbers in a little bit. But just to give you back to what I was saying before. Um, like in 2005, when ABC had the Super Bowl, the maximum, the top spend was 100, or the overall spend for advertising was 158 million, and and now we're almost this year will probably be close yeah, to but that 400. Was 15 years ago. So if you adjust for inflation, yeah, adjusting I mean. for inflation, and adjusting for the price of the ads. Obviously, uh, they 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 have much more or many more uh, commercial breaks or commercial ads in between, but also the price of the ads has 
kept increasing year after year right. after year. So um, again, this year we are at an average of uh, uh, 5.5 million, I think, on loans. So that's that's quite steep, you know, for for one. And, and, and you need to add to that also the uh, production cost, which normally is yeah. about the same the same cost. So well, I wouldn't say. I think that used to be the case when the ads were a million. I don't think people are spending five million on an ad. That's a lot of production cost. I I would guess probably. Depends on the company. Maybe a million. The major companies with the ad agents, uh, when they do these commercials, where they kind of send uh, to the uh, to the audience like this contest that they had, send us your commercial, and then if you're the winner. We'll put it on the Super Bowl. Obviously, that's a, a great avenue to have like amateur uh, videographers or whatever. I know, but even I mean, a big budget production could be a million. I mean, I don't think anybody's spending five million creating their ad. That's you'll an be, insane you'll be, amount you'll of money. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. I've with the company I produced million dollar commercials back 15 years ago for at but five million dollar commercials well, again it was years ago but when you start adding location shooting and production expenses and travel and this and that and post production and special effects and all that stuff I don't know uh, but comparing the Super Bowl to um, let's say the uh, NBA finals seven games what do you think is higher advertising the Super Bowl or the seven games combined of the NBA Probably finals? the Super Bowl. Well, obviously, I'm asking you the question with... <laughs> right, but the reason the Super Bowl ads are expensive is is not just that there's a ton of people watching. It's that people actually look... F it's this weird cultural phenomenon where people actually look forward to watching the Super Bowl commercials. It's like a thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, where definitely. People, like, normally, like the NBA... I don't, you know, I'm a big NBA fan. I don't pay attention to the commercials during the NBA Finals. I'm watching the game, you know? Right. Uh, during the Super Bowl, people actually watch the commercials. In fact, a lot of people who don't care about football watch the Super Bowl just for the commercials. So last year's six-game finals that was completed in six games uh, for ABC was $288 million, uh, revenue. Compared to the Super Bowl last year, which was one game, $336 million. Now... Is that U.S. or global? This is basically U.S. Um, yeah, because globally the NBA does more. Because the NBA is a of, global yes. score. The you know the downside of the Super Bowl is only. I'm the talking US. about the the the, the 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 television contract here. Obviously, if the NBA has a contract, I'm not talking about the NBA making money. I'm talking about the broadcaster making money. Well, keep in mind the NBA, the NBA also NBA. in the U.S. I think last year was like 30 million people watched it. Not. Yeah, yeah but it's six games too. It's not just one game. Yeah. You know, and the same thing with the World Series. With baseball, uh, it's even less, obviously. I don't know the audience of baseball. I'm not much of a baseball fan myself. But uh, baseball was uh, 191 million. So that's about a half of the Super Bowl was, even though it was also, uh, whatever, six games or something like that. So uh, now this year, we also have every year there's the traditional advertisers, uh, the Procter and Gambles and the uh, uh, Anheuser Busch and beers and auto car commercials and so forth. We have a few new advertisers, even though some of them um, have been there before with different products. But one of the ones that is interesting is the Bud Light uh, Seltzer, the new uh, uh, soda drink. I never had it, but uh, I've seen the commercials already. Some of them are probably not the one that we've seen in the Super Bowl, but that's a first time advertiser for that particular product. And then uh, we have Kellogg's uh, Pop-Tarts and Little Caesars Pizza, which... I don't know how many pizzas they have to sell but, uh, to, to compensate, but uh, that's one of the new ones. But there are actually two presidential candidates that are advertising, each of them with a 60-second commercial on the Super Bowl. Oh, that's a I lot. Want you 60 seconds. Yeah, I know. It's a 60-second well, commercial. one is definitely going to be Bloomberg because he's the billionaire. He has unlimited ad spend, right? Am one I of right? them is Bloomberg. Yeah, he's Michael Bloomberg. Who's the second one? Um... Trump? Trump. Okay. There you go. <laughs> the two rich guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, I was it, trying to think of the Democratic candidates who could afford a Super Bowl ad. I was like, oh, I don't know if any of them. From the could. ones that are left, not many. But yeah, it's funny that there's only two presidents. And obviously, Donald Trump is the incumbent uh, president. So he. They're he, buying 60 second ads? They're running both 60 second ads. Obviously, they, have, they need more time to uh, explain their policy or something. But um, yeah, they are the only two that are going to have. Um, um, presidential candidate ad 60 seconds a piece and i don't know how much they pay for the 60 seconds versus the um because the average cost for the 30 second is 5.6 million i don't know if the 60 second is literally twice as much or know. it's about time and a half or what but uh, that's a lot of money 
But hey, that's the campaign money and they can afford it. So they are advertising and hopefully uh, they'll convince a lot of people. Um, the one that I like is that Porsche, my favorite brand, is returning to the uh, Super Bowl. I can't wait to see that commercial. I haven't seen it. I don't know what they're advertising. Do you think it's going to be... That, I think it's going to be the uh, Taycan, the uh, the new uh, the electric. electronic? That's yeah. what I thought too. Yeah, I think it's going to be... A very branded commercial with the uh, maybe mixing the environment with the electric car and all that. If I were to guess, they probably promote their SUV and their electric car because those are more masses cars rather than like, okay, some what GT3 but or something. The, yeah, obviously not the SUV. Uh, the GT3 is all the sports cars that are going to be. But the, the SUV, I mean, it's a different audience. I mean, you're trying to, I think they're going to advertise the mix of technology with environment. Oh, I'm sorry, the mix of technology with environment and performance because they claim on that they have better performance uh, range and everything uh, than the Tesla and all that stuff. So I think they're going to combine a little more like the... Uh, the uh, Speaking of Tesla, you see that for the first time ever, they have back-to-back -back profitable quarters. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they did report uh, profitable. So um, then we're talking about ratings. So this is the thing that is a contrast because when, when it comes to the Super Bowl, the uh, even though the commercial cost or the advertising costs have kept increasing over the last basically every year, the ratings have been going down for the last ten years. Let me ask you though, um, when they talk about the ratings, are they talking about just the pure television ratings, or does that include streaming too? They they count streaming separately, um, but um, they're basically they they have streaming numbers as well. And they, you told me that it was what ninety eight million last year, right? Uh, and I, I but think, they, but they, that's the viewership. But the rating is basically a, a number. It's yeah, like I a, know the rating, but it's, the it's viewership a rating, right? Was just about a hundred million. I remember a few years ago it was one hundred ten. So you think maybe those ten million are just not watching, or maybe they're streaming it now? No, no. This is people basically the average uh, ninety eight point three last year was ninety eight point three million viewers average, and that's across all all platforms. Okay. Um, even though um, like obviously it's not the same thing throughout the game like, at the end of the game last year some right. people came back and then you have 107 or something like that but the main thing is the average viewership for the Super Bowl has decreased uh, year after year and the ratings uh, have also decreased to the point that there were last year I think 41 or something like that and this being as much as 48, 49 and obviously each rating point equates to a number of people depending on the on the, on the program that you have so right. um, so I mean but what I was... It's not surprising to me, really, that they... I mean, I don't think... Like, we're talking about markets and all that stuff. I don't think the Super Bowl... Uh, well, last year was, I think, a good market because it was L.A., the Rams. Now, obviously, the Rams just moved there. So I don't know how big they are in L.A., um, well, they used to be there too, so they still have a lot of fans. And and then you had the Patriots, who obviously have a huge following, and I think a lot of people watch just to root against the Patriots. Um, so I'm surprised that it went down, but maybe. Who uh, do you? Th I mean, th obviously this year is San Francisco, who's back in the Super Bowl. I yeah, I mean San Francisco. It. The whole that has a huge market because you're going to get a lot of Californians watching. And sure. And now then, Kansas City. I don't know. But again, I don't know. I, the teams matter. But I don't know for the Super Bowl how much the teams matter. Like last year with the finals, in the NBA finals, it was a big deal that Toronto made it. Good for Toronto, but for the ratings, it didn't help. Because right. before you had LeBron and the Warriors, which is like two huge markets or a huge market and the biggest NBA On star. The names. Right. But last year it was <clears throat> Toronto. Um, so the audience was definitely lower. Uh, I don't know if it matters as much. It do, I'm sure it plays a factor, but I think a lot of people just watch the Super Bowl. No, regardless. I mean, the Super Bowl is more of, um, I mean, obviously the, the way the game is set up and everything is, even the halftime show and all that is more the, the spectacle, the whole the whole game. Right. And, and it attracts and, female audience as well that just, you know, have parties, people gather more than ever. There's tons of statistics about how much food is consumed and people plan to watch it in parties and goods and together and all that stuff. Plus, but the, I would say that even though it's Kansas City, which is not like a big market, you know, Pat Mahomes and the Kansas City team right. is a very exciting team that I think a lot of people enjoy watching, even if they're not like from that area mm -hmm. and fans of Kansas City. They just like to watch that team because they're a very exciting, explosive offensive team. Yeah, but the other interesting fact is that the average audience of the Super Bowl keeps increasing, <clears throat> meaning that some of the younger audience may not be so interested in the Super Bowl, whereas the 
the traditional audience that keeps getting older every year still likes like the, the big game basically right. so so it, i think it's more of a generational thing that maybe younger audience say yeah it's a super bowl they watch a little bit they take off or they do some other stuff and they're not like glue to the game you know like like the person that used to be doing it when it's 20 21 30 35 you know watching the games every year like a big event you know so anyways that's just a little data but obviously advertisers or don't care because they keep paying more and more for the for the ad time our space so um that's just uh, another data there um the as far as social media which is the last point that i wanted to make um during last year's uh, super bowl they were um uh, what they considered 32 million social interactions between obviously the major social networks like uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and so forth. But the, the, the thing that does get my uh, attention here is that the top Twitter minute, um, which inc uh, as far as interactions was 171,000 interactions or tweets, and it wasn't actually doing the game. It was doing the halftime show. Mm -hmm. So that tells you, I mean, uh, was in Maroon 5 last year, I think? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was Maroon 5 was the main um, event or the main show. And that tells you how much people are waiting for the halftime show to basically talk and all that stuff. And, and doing the game, people maybe are more watching the game, you know, as opposed to interacting. So, um, which is also interesting because the halftime show, as you, I'm sure you know, uh, the, the performers don't get paid to perform. They, they are invited um, and they obviously pay for their expenses, but they don't get paid for the performance itself. Yeah. However, but they get, they get paid in watching them. dividends because over the years, each performer that has been there has seen their sales, their personal record sales increase like four, five hundred percent, and that's happened from Maroon Five for uh, uh, Justin Timberlake for. Um, yeah. Let's put it this way. Advertisers pay $5 million for 30 seconds. Right. These guys get 15 minutes for free. Right, exactly. So so this year's uh, halftime is going to be um, uh, Jello, Jennifer Lopez, and uh, Shakira. Um, so um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So enough of the Super Bowl. Just one more question for you. Yep. Who's your pick? I don't know. <laughs> you asked me before the show. I don't sure. know. I guess Kansas City just because uh, – it doesn't seem anyone's been able to uh, slow down their offense yet. Now, San Francisco is pretty good, but I don't know. I don't have a dog in the fight. I like, um, I, like, um, I like San Francisco in general, but I like Pat Mahomes a lot as a quarterback. I, he, I, the guy is – I'm not obviously a fan of Kansas City or anything, but the, the couple of games that I watched playoffs as well, the guy is electrifying. I mean, he – and I just learned actually that he played about – three four five different sports like he was basketball baseball and all that stuff and he has he's able to combine the skills from each of the sports and that makes him like this special mobility when like like a point guard like a baseball um so he, the guy is fun to watch because you think he's totally cornered and, and all of a sudden he just escapes and throws the most unbelievable pass yeah <laughs> so i mean that's going to be entertaining i i think i think san francisco will win uh, i don't know really? why think i so? think i think they're more complete um, overall, um, if, and if they figure out a way to um, to stop Kansas City, uh, or especially to, to yeah, but that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Nobody stopped them so far. They're down twenty nothing, was it against the Texans? Yeah, they I know. won. Yeah, but they now were it, down it, it to the Titans. Tougher. They but won. the same thing. You can also say the same thing about San Francisco. I mean, you get Green Bay that came back and this and that, and then they went to San Francisco, and the game was over in the first quarter. I mean, really, it's just a big difference. They make Green Bay look like like a high school kids, you know. Yeah. So, anyways, um, so you, Kansas City, me, San Francisco, we'll discuss it next week. Sure. We'll see who's right. I'm not putting any money on it anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'm not very confident. Like I said, I watched the playoff games. I did not watch regular season football, so don't uh, take my opinion as uh, very important. So, one more topic that we have. Actually, we have a couple of quick ones, but uh, we were talking before about Barstool and media companies. And um, this week, I was it this week or last week, uh, when uh, Gwyneth Paltrow show. What's it called? Uh, Goop, the Goop Lab. Lab. Yeah, that's an interesting case because that's another thing that I think she started that like ten years ago or maybe more, two thousand five, six, seven or something. I don't know how long. I've been on the better for a few well, years. Well, well, it so used to be it used to be a blog, and this is exactly what you and I were talking about, especially, especially you, how you start your blog. You're talking about your, you know, in, in in her case, it was mostly about her lifestyle and products and so forth. 
and then it became more of a podcast and then now it's, it's a partnership with Netflix where they have a six episodes I think um, on Netflix I actually watched half of one of them just out of curiosity and that is basically her and her COO uh, the format is very similar uh, for all the episodes they they introduce the the topic and then they have a little sit down like this with the expert on the topic whether it's a psychologist whether it's a, whatever is the topic and then they basically have their own their own employees participate in in that whether it's uh, uh Wim Hof with a uh, cold um you know, ice baths and all that, or or some psychedelic treatments and things like that. Obviously, it's always going to be controversial because she likes those topics. But uh, it's a half-hour show, and um, I would say it's mostly a female audience. Even though sometimes you see male male uh, participants also on the uh, on the different treatments. But um, anyways, that's that's an example of. Uh, it supposedly, it's worth now like two hundred and fifty million dollars as of two thousand eighteen. So that's an example of a uh, of a. Uh, a person that has developed obviously she was famous and everything but uh, she's developed or started as a simple blog she used a personal a brand audience exactly she developed a personal brand used that personal brand to create a consumer brand right and then and develop her audience right to which she's now selling her products and her products could be services could be actual products she sells candles with very original names uh, she sells basically. Yeah, she sells a lot of. I don't want to get on the controversial side because I agree. There's a lot of stuff that she sells that is kind of wacko uh, and probably not real, like crystals that heal you, whatever. But besides the point of just this specific example of goop, um, what, what I'm really interested in, like they obviously have this show on Netflix, and Netflix is promoting it, and Netflix has a huge reach, obviously. Um, I think that this will be a another major revenue source for Netflix down the road because they're basically taking the idea of an advertorial which mm -hmm. has been around a long time in magazines and newspapers and all that but instead of an advertorial a show vertorial where they say okay you brand pay us or give us some make some type of deal and we'll let you have a Netflix original and we're going to put it to our Netflix subscriber base of 100 plus 130 million whatever it is now right uh, uh, subscribers mm -hmm. and they're going to see it and it's going to be a very well produced uh, Netflix original show promoting your brand. I think that's Yeah, I wonder uh, what the partnership, I haven't found anything specific about how the partnership worked. I think in this case they weren't getting paid by uh, Goop. I think if I were to guess, I don't know. If I were to guess, because Gwyneth Paltrow, if you will know, she announced that she's done like acting and she's done with the show business. I think she's done with career. movies. Maybe she's still doing some uh, television shows. So even In fact, she has The Politician or something with uh, Netflix. Um, but I don't know. I mean, yeah, Basically, she's definitely done with She's with, done with movies. So, she yeah, said with that. Movies. Yeah. And I think it's because obviously Gwyneth Paltrow has a name and a poll. And so mm -hmm. they wanted to get her on Netflix. So maybe instead of paying her her big movie check that she normally would demand for being on a movie, or maybe she did that show in consolation. I'll be on this show. You let me promote my <laughs> yeah, brand. Pure speculation. But, but let's yeah. just say down the road, like forget that it's Goop, but it's another brand, whatever. Um, maybe Casper, right? We've been talking about Casper. Maybe Casper wants to have a show about sleep. Um, and Casper says, okay, we will pay, uh, whatever. I don't know. I don't want to throw numbers out there, but we'll pay or have some type of brand partnership. Deal yeah. It's somewhat Netflix like an infomercial on, on Netflix where you buy a half hour programming and you, but not just it. an infomercial. That's the outdated way. I think this is a right. modern way. And I think that not just Netflix will do this. You know, Disney obviously has their streaming service. I could see a lot of brands partnering with mm -hmm. Disney to make a show vertorial. Um, this is just more uh another example but and i think a potentially major example of of media driving commerce mm -hmm. and i think that this will continue to happen and i think that this is the the template for what we will see many examples to come right right yeah we'll see i'm curious to see how the uh the audience on the i'm not sure if netflix will will uh Disclose well, numbers, viewership, streaming, no, downloads. Well, they, they do it for. I mean, when they open with with um, 
Stranger Things and things like that. They say, oh, 200 they million do it downloads. Occasionally, but yeah, very I mean, when guarded. it's good, they do it. When it's bad, they just really don't do it. But, but I'll give an example. The uh, when, when The Irishman came out, they, the weekend after, they said that 70 million people already downloaded the movie and streamed the movie. So The Marie Kondo, the. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, the. Uh, brings or, Joy thing. Yeah. Um, her, uh, whatever, organization. Organization, show. yeah. Well, that show turned her into it, her book was already a bestseller right but then after that it i mean the sales of the book skyrocketed well, yeah i mean I, and she has a website an e-commerce site with lots of different products mm -hmm. for organization and whatever recommendations on and the that website. site there's no official numbers but did millions and millions of revenue because of that show and mm -hmm. that was i think less intentional of like oh specifically let's do this to drive sales but it did and i think the blueprint is being built for creating original content on major streaming services mm -hmm. to promote brands. And then you can do a hell of a lot of selling based on that. Right. All right. So, um, you mentioned to me also, um, scroll this oh, yeah. this new company. The last little thing we talk about. Yeah. This is the last topic. Um, I honestly didn't hear about him. I guess they're pretty new, but the concept seems pretty yeah, interesting as far as being like a aggregator of, um, news or not necessarily news just magazines and content that yeah, you can you subscribe it's a subscription service right yeah i want you to explain the, the whole details but is that what it is like a subscription yeah so basically five bucks a month and you get access to i think they said 300 over 300 different publications some of which are paid some of which are free but it's it's an ad free publication um, we're talking iphone right i think it's any phone or device or, or any whatever. but basically it's not a it's not a publication i mean it's basically something that you it's, it's like a app. it's like a netflix of of magazines and newspapers right but it's like a phone app or ipad or something yeah yeah okay. exactly and uh it's five bucks a month and basically there's no ads no nothing so like uh some of the companies like vox all of the vox um media entities so vox.com verge all of those are on it. Um, <clears throat> actually, I believe the Ringer might be on it too because if the Ringer is partnered with Vox. Um, but anyway, so for five bucks a month, also the Atlantic Salon, uh, a, a bunch of a bunch of different publications um, are on there. And so you pay five bucks a month, you get all of these in one source, no ads, no nothing, just the contents basically. Um, and they're they're doing this in an effort, obviously, because a lot of people use ad blockers these days. Mm -hmm. um, and they were kind of, if you go to their website, it's scroll.com, I think, um, or just Google scroll, it comes up. Um, they were showing the dollar comparison for the media publisher side. They were basically saying that um, for every page view, uh, a typical, like let's say The Verge, right, gets point, basically 1.1 cents, so a penny and a tenth of a penny, right, right. Uh, per page view. If someone's using an ad blocker they get zero obviously mm -hmm. and with their service people get 1.6 pennies per page view based on the five dollar subscription right. so they basically uh are paying out to media companies that put their articles on there uh 1.6 pennies who, who owns um scroll is this a um, brand new uh, uh, startup it's like a, or it's a startup yeah it's okay. well funded uh, by different companies but now a lot of media companies have not jumped on board yet it's kind of similar to Apple News that launched. Right. Um, that was also a five dollar a month subscription, and a lot of companies are hesitant just because a lot of companies say. So there's no free option, and then you have to subscribe for other publications. They have a special offer because they just launched. It's two fifty a month for the first six months instead of mm. okay. uh, five dollars a month. Um, but yeah, down the road, just five bucks a month, which I think is pretty reasonable if they have a lot That's of pretty reasonable definitely. Um, companies on there and a lot of good content i think mm -hmm. a lot of people will be willing to pay that um the biggest deal for them is just if they can get a lot of the uh media companies on board right. uh, because obviously you know the ad model works to an extent but when you know like we were i was complaining the other day i had to go to forbes to get an article for something in our newsletter that i send out uh, every week and it was like i'm opening the page it takes forever to load and I have ad blocker. I didn't used to have ad blocker, but I finally relented because I said, I give up. And okay, so they force you to turn ad blocker off. The first thing that happens, autoplay video on the article, then autoplay ad video. Yeah, I Then a bunch of pop-up ads. And it's like, this is why people use ad blockers because they hate that crap. Well, I think part of the value or a big, a big part of the value for these types of companies like Scroll and all that where they have subscribers is actually the subscriber data. I mean, they, they yes. are, because then they can 
monetize that subscriber base into some other um, products, basically. So they, they provide this, uh, they, they get this content from these different magazine outlets or magazine publications, and then they guarantee they no pop-ups and no advertising and all that stuff, but they get subscriber data information, which then they can use for some other monetization type thing. So they commerce. Exactly, exactly. So they not only have the subscribe the subscription uh, revenue, which obviously starts out an app and they, they start with two fifty, then five and then who knows, then they start adding like different tiers or something. That's that's like everybody does. But then the subscriber data is critical for them. Big data and data from consumers, especially now, the ones that you get are, I don't is, know. Do they share the data with the publications or not? I, I don't know. I mean that's just basically I um, think if I was a publication I would want the data. Yes. I don't uh, think maybe I would that's do the, it if I didn't get the data. Maybe that is the exchange they have for in exchange for doing that they provide them. But obviously you need to read thoroughly the terms and conditions to see what they do with your information when you sign in, which nobody does. You agree and then you move on. But trust me, some somebody is getting that data and doing something for it because or with it because <clears throat> you wouldn't get that. Now part of it is that they have way fewer eye trackers though. That is part of the th the appeal to some right. consumers. That because they're not <clears throat> selling ads, mm -hmm. they don't need all these ad trackers. So they have obviously you still need some trackers uh, just to make an app function. Right. But as far as the they said eighty percent fewer uh, like tracking basically because mm -hmm. they're saying we're not putting Facebook pixels and Google, all this stuff mm. that if you're running ads, you need to have, that's not on here because we don't right. need it because you're paying for it. basically to the consumer it's pay and you don't get tracked and you don't get right. ads. Right. And then for the media publication, it's, Hey, make money on all these people that you're not making money on. Mm. So I think it has promise. We'll see. Um, the biggest thing I'm is actually just, surprised it doesn't like something doesn't exist. Well, like they were just a launch a year ago. Okay. And they've been delayed a lot. Okay. Because um, I think I thought I heard about something like this before, but I didn't see it. I happening. think the big move for them, and I don't know all the details of exactly what they did, but I would go to the top media publications that I can offer equity and say, "Give us your content, you get equity in the right, company," right. and then that's how you do it. That's what I would do. All right. Very good. Well, that that's it for. Uh, this week's episode, uh, remember that this is uh, produced and brought to you by MGR Agency, which is our parent company. Um, we uh, specialize in digital marketing and content marketing as well. So for any media needs, e-commerce and everything else, uh, be sure to just go to uh, mgragency.com and uh, you can find a lot of different uh, forms depending on your interest that you can fill out and then we do reply to everybody actually right away, usually even before 24 hours. So any questions you have, whether it's on e-commerce, um, we do a lot of Amazon stores, uh, digital marketing, advertising, all of that. Um, you can just go to our website. And uh, we also have a newsletter that goes out every week. Um, it's an e-commerce newsletter where actually David curates information from uh, major sources and many breaking news that are not even advertised yet. We can sometimes put out a few days ahead of time. So, um, yeah, keep in touch. Um, I don't have anything else. I hope everybody enjoys the game this weekend. Um, we'll have a Super Bowl special next week where we're going to go over our favorite and least favorite ads and kind of discuss yeah we're definitely going to be uh watching it this weekend and uh we're going to be watching the commercials too which means that um we're going to be uh watching the entire thing pretty much and then um uh, everybody has the their favorite commercials and then they have obviously the official radio but more than just like oh i like this didn't like it a little bit of the strategy and potentially what they're going for with the commercials. right and we're going to try to uh, kind of get a little bit more the uh, advertisers perspective on the commercials basically. right and see who got it right and who got it wrong pretty much in our opinion obviously as far as the advertisers and then we'll see what happens but um yeah it'll be interesting looking forward to that and um one last question how many um how do you want to say social impact, uh, social message commercials? Do you think there will be, as far as like trying to be like, oh yeah, some yeah, type yeah, of yeah, yeah, moral yeah. compass as a brand? How yeah, many well, think? I bet you we'll see a lot of those this year. It's interesting because there's going to be a 60 second commercial from Facebook, mm. and I bet you that's going to be a little bit of a branding yeah, image sure. commercial saying, sure. "Hey, we are changing. Didn't we care about your last privacy." Year too, that was. Uh, I think they did. Um, like, yeah, but they were advertising more like 
they, they were it was some feature some no because this was right after the um yeah yeah the cambridge analytica and they yeah. were kind of damage control I think. yeah i think so, this one would be something similar maybe even uh uh mark zuckerberg has a little statement or over something. O- over under let's put it at <laughs> uh five and a half do you think yeah. there will be more or less than five and a half uh social message commercials i think about there I'm going to go over. Over? Yes. I don't know. I'm going to go over. I bet you there will be 7 to 10. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I well, you know, so. you know, Anheuser-Busch and all these, they always have the typical commercial to also remember the troops and all that, which is all very good. It's, I mean, it's just branding. Like, like I said, I mean, this. I know, this but big you always companies, have to be careful because a lot of these companies are hypocritical. And, you know, they put out some beautiful messaging about how people <clears throat> need to be better, but then they themselves have horrible corrupt practices. You yeah, know? yeah, I know. And they care for the environment and then they have all these uh, products made they in They care China. for the environment if it's profitable for them, right. not if because <clears throat> they actually care Maybe about Apple will have something about privacy. I'm sure they will <laughs> we'll if they have a commercial. But yeah, yeah uh, over under, I'm going way over. Way over. Uh, okay. if I, I'm gonna, we're going to start MGR betting because Barstool <laughs> just sold for $450 million. We're going to do ad betting. That's what we're going to start. I'm bad at betting. I, I like to just work for my money. I don't like to gamble. But uh, anyways, um, it's good. Thank you, David. Um, we'll watch the game. And uh, everybody else, you have any input, just uh, we'll have show notes. You can contact us. This podcast goes um, obviously on YouTube. And then the, the transcript and the show notes go on different outlets that we have, uh, MGR Blog, MGR Edge, obviously our MGR agency website, and then it goes spread out through uh, social media and everything. So you can you can reach us anyway. And uh, if you have any topics that you'd like us to uh, discuss or any questions, please just, uh, just let us know. Until then, um, everybody have a great time, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. See Bye. you.